Hey everybody, this is Stanley Abel, and I am a high school teacher at Noblesville High School, and I teach history, and I also teach a class called Social Justice, and I am here with Israel Solomon, who is an artist, a gentleman, a scholar, but before we get to all of those things, I want to know a little bit about your name, man, because that's heavy duty. It's an awesome name. How did you get the name Israel? The, the funny thing, I'm thinking about a conversation that I had yesterday yeah. uh, with a young lady who I'm going to be painting in the near future. Um, we were talking and she asked me, she said, um, your name is, she was like, is that an artist's name? I said, no, this is actually my name. And she thought it was so funny because she thought that it was just the name that I had came up with. Uh, and uh, when I told her that it was my actual name, she started laughing and I said, well, what do you, what do you, what do I look like? What does my name look like? And you know, we had a little joke about it, but yeah, yeah I, I think it's a good name. Man. works of art like that um, what what is the inspiration for that because that's a community piece right that's yes. out there for for everybody it's not in a gallery it's uh, it's not uh, you know sequestered away someplace it's right there in the public eye what what is your inspiration for that kind of art yeah um, I believe that a lot of times when I'm creating things I need to use my voice and I need to speak for myself, I need to speak for my culture, and I need to speak for individuals who might not have that opportunity that I get blessed with. Yeah. So if I've been provided with you know, a skill set that I can use to say something, I feel like it's important for me to, to utilize it to, to say something that might be min meaningful. So I believe you're talking about the George Floyd mural that's, that's correct. that was on Mass Avenue. Yes, sir. So the thought process behind that was there was a lot of turmoil going on in the country around the time um, um, of George Floyd's death about a year ago uh, last year, about a year ago this time last year, a um, little bit earlier than a year ago. But um, what I wanted to do with that particular image was I wanted to spread a message of positivity. And that's what I try to do through my work. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to humanize George Floyd and I wanted to, you know, uh, create empathy surrounding his name and um, so the way that I tried to do that was showing him uh, in three I, I had three images of him that I used I used an image of him as a child being held by his mother I used an image of him as an individual um, and you know so we all can identify regardless of what race we are, what sex we identify with, we can all identify with being our individuals and hopefully we can have pride in who we are. And then I also wanted to show him as a father. So I wanted to make him relatable to people and you know, to strip away all of the negativity, that things that have been said about him in the media. I didn't want it to be a shock value type of thing. I wanted people to empathize with one of those images. like. together on a project at Noblesville High School. We're gonna we're gonna paint a mural in the entryway of our library. And yes. It's gonna be very visible. Mm -hmm. And so when we talked to you for the first time when we were kind of getting to know each other, um, you came across exuding positivity and you said that's what you want your art to be. Not yes. to be in somebody's face, not to challenge someone. Right. So it's no secret that we're trying to create um, uh, a culture of welcoming at Noblesville yeah. High School in our community. Mm -hmm. How do you see that mural and your collaboration with the students being able to do that? How, how can you see that mural being a welcoming piece that, uh, that you infuse your philosophy of art and how you can collaborate with kids to make that happen? Yeah, so I'm hoping that through this collaboration, first of all, that we can get as many voices as possible included within this mural. And I hope that we can rep represent voices, kind of like what I was saying earlier, who may feel like they're not getting the opportunity to um, be heard. Yeah. You know, um, it's, a, it's extremely important um, in our lives that we're being heard and that we're feeling comfortable with where we're at. And I'm hoping that what we can do with this mural is produce work that is reflective of maybe populations or maybe groups of individuals who feel like maybe their voice isn't being heard. And, um, you know, 
I want, you know, your input. I don't want this to be about me or my input. I want it to reflect your voices when we're creating this mural. And hopefully that can, you know, help um, create conversation in a positive way. Um, so that that's sort of what I'm hoping for. You know, I'm, I'm imagining like, it's been a long time since I've been in school, but I can remember times being in the school and not feeling really comfortable with, with my environment. And if you don't feel 100% comfortable with the environment that you're in for learning, then it's gonna be hard for you to get 100% out of that environment. So hopefully, you know, this mural can help that. Even if it helps just a little bit, That. It's doing its job. So in your view, how can art bridge that chasm? Those two, you know, you, you know, there's two points of view. There's, you know, very different points of view. How can art address that difference? I mean, you just kind of spoke to it, but how can art fill that void uh, where there's disagreement and, and start a conversation. I think the only way that that can occur through art is when the artist is being authentic and honest in the work that they produce. Because I think that, you know, being authentic and honest um, will force people to look at the work and to have conversation from the work. and. Yes, there may be disagreements that come about um, based upon what they're seeing or, or what's being um, exhibited. However, it is sparking conversation and you cannot get, like you're not gonna be able to grow or get anywhere if there's not a conversation. Even if the first one is conflict and you get nowhere, or the second or the third one is conflict and you get nowhere, if you keep working at it, eventually something's gonna happen. So, last student question, what made you interested in collaborating with Noblesville on this project? I think that this is an amazing project um, to get students involved and to allow students to share a voice where they may feel like they have not been able to do that. I'm hoping that, you know, those individuals who are feeling like they have not been able to um, express themselves in the way that they would like are going to get an opportunity through this project. So, you know, if I can help in that way, I, I hope, I think that, you know, this is, this is definitely worth doing it. Yeah. Yes.